All right, so this exercise involves this O thingy, which is like oscillation. And so when I first saw this exercise, I was like, I've never really worked with whatever this oscillation thingy means. So this is probably like, it looks intimidating, so I'm not gonna do it. But then I decided, okay, I wanna try to knock out as many of these exercises as I, as I can. And so I decided to look at it and it turns out to not be that bad. So let f of x i plus be the limit as y decreases, sometimes you'll see this notation, as y decreases to x i, or the limit as y approaches x i from the right of f y and f of x i minus be the limit as y approaches x i from the left or as y approaches xi from the left of fy. So it's basically just a limit from the right and a limit from the left. Um, but I'm using notation that is sort of similar to the type you would see when you're analyzing uh, finite element methods, which I've worked a little bit with. And so I'm like, here's a good opportunity to introduce some neat notation that's relevant to some of the research that I work on. So anyways, since f is increasing the limit as delta uh, goes to zero of m of x i f delta remember what this thing is um, I certainly don't which is why I had to write it down this is the supremum of all f of x such that x minus x i is less than delta. This is just the definition. This thing on the inside here is the definition of capital M of x i f delta. Um, so when we take this limit, this is sort of a limb soup type of thing, but from the right. Um, so anyways, f is an increasing function. So if x minus xi is less than delta, um, this is going to be equal to, oh wait, is this going to be exactly equal to? Um, mm, eh, I don't know. I'm limited to say this, the limit as delta goes to zero of f of x plus delta equals f of x i plus. Hmm, okay, so. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a less than or equal to here. And I claim that this is fine. It's fine because we're taking here. So here's what I'll do. I've got it. So this is equal to the limit as delta decreases to zero of the supremum of f of x where the norm of x minus x i is less than or equal to delta. And why is this true? Certainly, um, so when we take the limit as delta goes to zero, um, you, if you take any f of x where x minus x i is less than or equal to delta, the only thing that this changes is this allows you to choose f of x i. No, it allows you to choose f of x plus delta because that's the farthest thing to the right that you can go. And so technically um, that gives you, that could give you a larger number than f of x or 
f of x plus delta could be strictly larger than any other f of x. Oh, battery saver mode? Probably should plug this in. Okay, so... Hold on. Good. Okay, so... f of x plus delta could be greater than f of y for all y such that the norm of x, wait, what? what is xi? Oh, xi is here. So, oh, so it should be f of xi plus delta. Okay, so f of xi plus delta could be strictly larger than any fy where y is chosen such that the distant, such that the norm of y minus xi is strictly less than delta. However, if that's the case, then when we take this limit, we'll eventually take the, um, we could take delta over two. And so, then you're, you'll be discarding that f of xi plus delta. So any, any other additional points that are introduced here, and which could possibly increase the value, are eventually disregarded as you take the limit as delta goes to zero. And therefore, these two sets in the limit are equal. Okay, so now this, we can replace what's on the inside now with f of xi plus delta, and that's because f is an increasing function. Okay, and then just by definition, this is fxi plus. And similarly, the limit as delta goes to zero of lowercase m x i f delta. This is the limit as delta goes to zero. And now we have the infimum. The infimum of f of x, x minus x i is less than delta, no, less than delta, and this equals, for the same reason, the limit as delta goes down to zero, the infimum, by the way, delta, in the textbook, delta just goes to zero, but it should be decreases to zero, because delta cannot be negative, or else this doesn't make any sense. And this again is just the limit as delta decreases to zero of f of x minus, now xi minus delta, which is f xi minus. So the what oscillation, or I'll just call it O, O of f xi is the limit as delta decreases to zero, here I'll write that, the limit as delta decreases to zero of m x i f delta minus lowercase m x i f delta, which equals f of x i plus minus f of x i minus. We then have the result f of b minus f of a is the same as we're going to take f of b and now we're going to add, we're going to sum from i equals 1 to n n minus f of x i plus plus f of x i plus minus f of x i minus plus f of x i minus and then after this sum, we're going to subtract f of a. And basically we just took what we had before and we just added this sum from i equals 1 to n of a whole bunch of things. And each of these things is 0 because everything cancels out. However, we're going to turn this, so we have the sum from i equals 1 to n of o of f x i. Because we have 
for each i equals one to n, we get one, we get an x we get an fxi plus and we get a minus fxi minus here. So we extract all of these things from the inside that I've just underlined. And what we end up on the outside is, let's see here, so we still have f of b. We'll subtract f of xi plus plus the sum from i equals 1 to n minus 1 of f of x i plus 1 minus minus f of x i plus plus f of x i minus minus f of x no minus f of a okay so now what so we've got the sum from 1 to n of o of f uh, f comma x i which is what we want and then we've got all these other things. But we can use the fact that f is increasing and that all of the xi's are distinct. So, hmm. Okay, so fb minus f xi plus could be zero if xi, or no, this should be xn. And this should be x1 and not xi. Okay, so xn could be b, in which case approaching from the right doesn't really make sense. But I guess we don't really worry about that. Because if xn equals b, then we're still taking m of xn f delta in the definition of O, F, X, N. So the problem requires us to have that be a defined thing. We should probably just define if X, N equals B, then we should just define F of X, N plus to be F of B. And similarly, if X1, if X1 is equal to A, we should define F of X1 minus to be A. And I'm sure that's what the uh, author wanted us to do. But in any case, the fb minus fxn plus, it's either going to be 0, or it's going to be 0 if xn equals b. But if xn is not equal to b, it's going to be less than b. And since f is increasing, this is going to be a positive number. Similarly, fxi minus minus fa is either going to be 0, or if x1 is um greater than a, then this is going to be a positive number since f is increasing. And similarly, since um, these xi's are all distinct, if we look on the inside, xi is going to be strictly less than xi plus 1. And so we don't have a scenario where we're taking something. So the, the xi plus 1 minus will always be to the right of xi plus even though for the minus we're taking the limit as things increase and for the plus we'll be taking the limit as things decrease. If any of the xi's were equal, like if xi were to be equal to xi plus one, then this subtraction would not, then this difference would, could be a negative number. However, because that's not the case, this is a positive number. So we're taking the sum from i equals 1 to n of a bunch of these things of something which could uh, we got the sum of the o's then we've got the thing involving f of b which could be 0 or positive then the thing involving f of a which is 0 or positive and then each of these things are summing in here since f is increasing f has to be a, a strictly increasing function for this statement to be true because what we need is this sum needs to be strictly greater than zero. So each of these terms will be strictly greater than zero so long as f is a strictly increasing function and um, all the xi's are distinct. And I guess what I should do is I should have x1 is less than, less than or equal to xn. Because if all the xn's are, dis if all the xi's are distinct, we can just reorder them so that they're in increasing order. And that makes this notation work. 
So anyways, if we drop all of these terms, which are positive, we get greater than this one. And that's what we wanted. So, yeah. Basically, f is an increasing function, um, and it could have jumps. And what this is basically saying is that the jumps at the xi's is less, th the, the sum of the jumps at the xi's is less than the total jump of the function between a and b, which makes sense and should be true for an increasing function, but now we've proven it. And so now we're done.